Hello, I'm Dr. Perry Shea from the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA at the University of California, Los Angeles. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm here to share the results of Aspiro, the first study of gene therapy for X-linked myotubular myopathy, now published in Lancet Neurology. X-linked myotubular myopathy, or XLMTM, is a rare life-threatening congenital disease caused by mutations in the MTM1 gene. MTM1 encodes myotubularin, a protein needed for normal development and functioning of skeletal muscle. Myotubularin is dysfunctional or absent in XLMTM. This condition predominantly affects poise and is thought to occur in approximately one in every 40 to 50,000 male babies. About 80% of these boys experience severe muscle weakness and respiratory distress. Many are unable to sit, stand, or walk and many can't breathe without the aid of a ventilator. There are currently no approved treatments, and sadly, about half of the boys with severe XLMTM die before they are a year and a half old. There's clearly a strong need for treatment options for these children. In the Aspiro study, we evaluated Resimir gene built Parvovec, an investigational gene therapy designed to express MTM1 gene in skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle cells, enabling production of functional myotubularin. Aspiro was conducted in seven centers in North America and Europe, where we enrolled boys who were less than five years of age or who had participated in a separate run in trial called Inceptus. Participants had genetically confirmed XL MTM and were on mechanical ventilatory support. Aspiro was an open label dose escalation study with a delayed treatment control to minimize the burden on participants with XLMTN due to the ultra rare nature of this disease. The study initially had two parts. In part one, participants were randomly assigned at a ratio of two to one to receive either a single dose of Resimir gene Vilparvovec or delayed treatment. The first participants in part one received a lower dose and later participants received a higher dose. For part two, we planned to randomly assign equal number of participants to either the selected dose from part one or delayed treatment. Participants with delayed treatment who subsequently did not receive any dose and untreated patients from Inceptus served as controls. The higher dose was selected for part two but the trial was put on hold by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration after four participants unfortunately died. We will discuss these deaths and their implications later. Since we couldn't analyze the study in two parts as designed, in the article, we reported exploratory analyses by dosing groups versus the untreated control cohort. Seven participants received the lower dose of gene therapy. 17 received the higher dose, and 14 were untreated as of February 28, 2022. The primary outcome of the Spiro was the change from baseline to week 24 in hours of daily ventilatory support. We also assessed this outcome at 48 weeks. At the start of the Spiro, most participants required invasive ventilatory support nearly all day. Now, let me show you how ventilator use changed from baseline in each group. The untreated participants had very little change in ventilatory support over time. As you can see, the line for the participants who received the higher dose of gene therapy dips into the negative zone of the graph, indicating that they had significant reductions in ventilator use. Participants who received the lower dose had the biggest reduction in ventilatory use. But I should note that the lower dose and higher dose can't be directly compared due to follow-up differences as the trial progressed. The higher dose was more gradually weaned from the ventilator and had more frequent assessments to check for improvements in respiration. Unexpectedly, two-thirds of the treated patients stopped needing a ventilator entirely. Many participants also had unexpected improvements in motor function. Typically, healthy babies can sit unsupported by six to nine months of age and walk independently by 12 to 18 months of age. Aspiro participants range in age from six months to six years of age at the time of dosing. In contrast to healthy children, only three participants could sit for 30 seconds at baseline, and none could stand. Children who received gene therapy more than twice as likely as the untreated boys to sit unsupported during the study. In addition, 12 dose children 
six in each dose group, were able to stand. Eight children, five who received the lower dose and three who received the higher dose, began walking independently. Such improvements are exceedingly rare in patients with X-linked myotubular myopathy and were not seen in any of the untreated children. Improvements were also seen in other endpoints. Maximum inspiratory pressure, or MIP, shows the respiratory strain, and CHOP in 10 measures motor function. ASEN and PEDS QL NM focus on quality of life for caregivers and patients, respectively. Coming back to the safety risks I mentioned earlier, four children died of severe cholestatic liver failure following gene therapy. Three of these deaths occurred following the higher dose. The fourth was in a patient who subsequently received the lower dose. Three participants in the control group died from causes related to XLMTN. All participants, including the untreated ones, had adverse events, and most experienced events considered severe and or serious. Serious events thought to be related to gene therapy included non-fatal liver-related events, transiently low platelet counts, and suspected myocarditis. These exploratory results suggest that gene therapy with Resimir gene Belparvivec is the first potentially effective treatment for XLMTM. However, the unprecedented findings of ventilatory independence and achievement of motor milestones must be carefully weighed against the potential for fatal adverse events in the context of this life-threatening disease. The clinical trial revealed a previously unknown proclivity for cholestatic liver disease in some children with XLMTM. This highlights how investigations into rare disease therapies can unveil new insights into the diseases themselves. Currently, the Espiro trial remains on clinical hold while the mechanism of the four deaths is investigated and the risks and benefits of Resimir gene Belparvivec are further evaluated. Note that Resimir gene Belparvivec is an investigational product with no guarantee of approval. My co authors and I would like to thank the children, families, and the XLMTM patient community for their contributions to the study.